father of all wireless communications. His accomplishments have touched more people than perhaps any other scientist. Marconi's fascinating story is presented by Jerry D. Neal, who has spent a lifetime studying and utilizing many of Marconi's discoveries. Jerry Neal is co-founder of RF Microdevices Incorporated, a company that produces two million radio integrated circuits each day. Many of the components Marconi fabricated required one month of his time to produce one component and a complete transmitter took months to produce. Marconi tells of the tragic sinking of the RMS Titanic in 1912, resulting in the deaths of 1,517 people in one of the deadliest peacetime maritime disasters in history. On board the ship that was labeled unsinkable was Marconi's wireless telegraph station. This telegraph station was used to send distress signals to a nearby ship, resulting in 705 lives being saved. This tragedy brought into the public's eye the need for wireless communications on board ships. Welcome to the Royal Institution of Great Britain. For more than 125 years, great scientists have given regular lectures here on their work. Myself, I've given several lectures here in this very building. In fact, the very first radio transmission demonstration to the public was done in this very building. Tonight, I'm going to tell you the story of how many claim, uh, especially me, that I'm the father of wireless communications. I have a relay station outside of Boston, across the Atlantic, and I need, um, I think it's just about almost time. Yes, it is time. I, I need to uh, just conduct a little business, so just stick with me for a couple of minutes and then I'll get to my story. This is some of the equipment I've built, by the way. So I can tune this in. I wish it wouldn't sense it fast. Okay. Well, you're probably wondering what they were saying. Uh, I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> History intervened again. Right at the peak of my popularity, there was a ship building, a uh, ship operating company the White Star Line, and they said, we're building a new ship. And this ship is going to be the biggest ship in the entire world. And we're going to give you and your whole family free passage on this new ship. And this was a, a, a great thing. Uh, Beatrice, my wife, and the children were going to get to take a trip free of charge, first class, the maiden voyage on this new ship. The ship had my latest communications equipment on board. The ship was the Titanic. A few days before the Titanic was to sail, as my custom was, I didn't travel with my family too much. It's too much fun out on the seas without your family. Uh, at any rate, I told Beatrice, look, I'm going on to New York on another ship, and you bring the children, and you come and join me uh, in, in New York, and we'll have a family vacation. So she uh, agreed to that, and she was a little reluctant, but at any rate, I went out and, uh, and took another ship and went to uh, New York. Now... So Beatrice was left with the children to come over on the Titanic. Many of you may know the story. 
the Titanic was out in the middle of the Atlantic and it was April of 1912. In fact, the 14th of April, the Titanic had been sailing for five days. The Titanic had a rendezvous with immortality. There was an iceberg that had formed almost 3,000 years ago. It was rain that was coming down across Newfoundland. That rain had frozen and turned into a glacier. That glacier had moved down over a period of 3,000 years and a huge chunk of ice broke off into the Atlantic Ocean. That iceberg had been at sea three years before it had its rendezvous with the Titanic. It had been back and forth in the ocean currents moving slowly for three years and here comes the Titanic. All of a sudden, the rendezvous is complete. They hit and a giant hole is ripped in the hull of the Titanic. This is in the middle of the night. So I had two of my radio operators on board. Jack Phillips, senior operator, he's 26 years old. Harold Bride, junior operator, 22. The captain, Captain Smith, told the operators, get on, get on the uh, Marconi equipment and send out a CQD for help. They, they did that. And there was a ship close by the California, but its Marconi operator was um, off duty. They were not covered 24 hours a day like the Titanic. There was another ship, the Carpathia, that picked up the signals and said, okay, we'll come, we'll come to your rescue. And so they started. But the problem was that they were four hours away from the Titanic. Captain Smith, this was his last trip across the Atlantic. He was due to retire at the end of this voyage. There was only enough lifeboats on the Titanic for less than half of the passengers. Over 2,000 people on board, about 2,500. So the captain called in Thomas Andrews, which was the designer of the Titanic, and he said, what's going to happen? Mr. Andrews said, I'm sorry to tell you, sir, in two hours, this ship will be at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. These passengers, more than 1,500, will be dead within two hours. Captain Smith slowly went into shock, went to the bridge to await the fate. His officers kept loading the, the boats and they gave the order, women and children first, didn't matter what class, there was mass confusion in the bottom of the ship in third class because there were people coming over. Uh, there was 10 different languages spoken down there. They had only one interpreter. These people had no idea what was going to happen. So the ship started taking on more and more water. The Marconi operators, my operators, were released from their, from their duties and told it's every man for himself, but they wouldn't leave their post. They kept sending out the signals 
over and over. Now, that night, there were many heroic deeds on the Titanic. The boiler operators made a decision that they would stay down in the bottom of the ship and keep those giant boilers going the entire time. They continued to fire those boilers knowing that it was instant death for them. 150 of them had shoveled 600 tons of coal every 24 hours. And they volunteered to give their life to keep the power on so that people could be saved. The orchestra decided to try to continue to play. Some of the richest people in the world were on board the Titanic. John Jacob Astor was the richest. He had his new wife with him. She was pregnant. She got on the lifeboat and said goodbye to one of the richest men in the world. Also on board the ship were Isidore and Ida Strauss. They were heirs to the Macy fortune. Mrs. Strauss was told to get on the lifeboat, but when she learned that her husband was not going to be on, she said, I'm going to stay with him. So we've always been together. We've been married almost 50 years, and we've lived together, and we're going to die together. So she went back to join him and they perished. The Marconi operators continued to send the SOS as the ship was going down. There was no hope and the orchestra, 100% of them perished, but they did their duty. There was a gentleman on there, one of the most wealthy men in the world, Guggenheim, and he told his manservant, look, we're gonna die, so at least we can die as gentlemen. So they went and put on their formal clothes, went and got a brandy, and waited for the end. <clears throat> the end did come. 1,515 people died in the two hours that were remaining. 705 survived. This tragedy was a huge disaster. It brought on into the public's eye the, the need for wireless communications on board ship. All the people were hooked into the Carpathia and so they continued to go to shore in New York. Now, they arrived in New York and uh, I went out to Pier 54 to meet them. And when I got there, only one of my operators was there, Harold Bride. Jack Phillips had perished in the Titanic disaster. However, this event was a boom for my company. Instantly, my stock went from $25 to $225. What turned out to be a disaster for many was very successful for me personally. 
It changed the whole way that the world looked at wireless communications. Now, uh-oh, what about my family? As fate would have it, uh, two days before the Titanic was to sail, my son got the flu. Beatrice told the kids, I'm sorry, we're, we can't take the Titanic. We're going to have to take another boat. And so they went up to our home at Southampton and waved goodbye as the Titanic pulled out of the, uh, from the dock. This event, these two events, changed me into an international celebrity uh, with, without any equal. It set me up as the true father of all wireless communications.